spoke all the earth into the world. He said, let there be light, let it be bright, let there be day, let there be night. Out of the sound of his voice, birds, fish, and trees did come. The mountains, they melt like wax. The hills skip like young cows. And the sound of the voice of the God that we serve, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Besides the O Lord, Yeah, welcome, Prince. Welcome. The living God bless you. Living God bless you for joining our administrator. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, I'm sharing, so please do well to do sin. who have joined kindly do well to share i'm doing the same here after that we will go into prayer please do well to share as you have joined do well to share do well to share tonight is going to be an exposition so please do well to share let somebody also benefit god bless you Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please, if you have joined, kindly do well to share. Kindly do well to share. Within the next few minutes, we will be going into a time of prayer. Within the next few minutes, we will be going into a time of prayer. So please do well to share. In the next two minutes, we will be going into a time of prayer.
In the name of Jesus. Okay. Oh yes, uh, Tembi. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I am done sharing from my point. So those who have joined, please do well to also share. Do well to also share. Do well to also share. We are going into a time of prayer. We are going into a time of prayer tonight. By the good grace of our Father, the topic is we are still on altars. But the subtopic we are going to consider is really sensitive, really sensitive, and it will help us to understand so many things and certain happenings in our lives, how things go the way they do go. Tonight is on the horns of the altar, the horns of the altar. It is a very deep teaching that the truth is that I will not be able to go very deep here on Facebook. I will just give us a taste of it and my motive is to let you also go and learn more about it and also for you to know that there are deeper things in our God that if you are to pursue Jesus Christ it will be unveiled unto you shall we appreciate Jesus for his love shall we appreciate Jesus the Christ of God for his mercies Welcome, Stephen. Stephen Saki, you are welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah to Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus the Christ. Please do well to share. Shall we begin to tell Jesus, thank the Holy Spirit of God. Somebody tell Jesus to love him. Tell him you love him for his mercy, his love, his protection over you, your body, soul, and spirit, and over your family. Begin to appreciate Jesus. Zelebosha. In the name of Jesus, Radada I andola bosha. Zi adaria gade shelele besebre ketele bosh. Zi adada dia dada kaba midele boshe brem beveli adoshe. In the name of Jesus, Radada man tele boshe. Branta ibranta lia gada. In the name of Jesus, yes Lord. Zebele bele bosha, bram papa i kai katam. Zetele lele bosha, bram papali a katam. Zele bele bosha, bram papali a dosha, bram papali a dala la basha brantam. Le bele boka la 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 bosha, bram papali a dosha brantam. Zebram papali a ba tali a ba adam. Zetele le bram papali a dosha pam. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your grace. Jesus, we thank you for your message. Jesus, we thank you for your love. Jesus, we thank you for your message. In the name of Jesus, Radolos, Brebe Begadiados, Medele Brenda Kedebosha, Zedele Bosha Brenda Legadosha. In the name of Jesus, Radada, Madolobosha, Brenda Beliados, Kebele Belebosha, Brapa Palia Gatam. In the name of Jesus, Radada Rabosha. Le bele bosha bre bre bakaria ba taria ba tam le bre bre belia ba taria ga tolo boshi zele le le bosha nta ta taria ga tam in the name of Jesus ra dolo bosha bre mba palia ga tam izete le bese bre mba palia do shabam in the name of Jesus ra balia ga do shi zete le be ka le le a do shi bre mba palia do shi. Zedele Gadesh, Brenda Palia Ka Ianta, Zebebe Brenda Pali Adosha Pam, Zebe Brenda Pali Adosha, Brain Pali Adosha, Zelele Bosha Babranta Icatolo Bosha, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Somebody begin to ask Jesus the Christ to cleanse you and to wash you with the precious blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. There is a certain voice that is crying against you, but there is a higher voice that supersedes that crying voice that is against you. And that voice is the voice that is found in the blood of Jesus. Blood carries voice. 
blood carries voice let the blood that is let the voice that is found in the blood of jesus speak for you tonight appropriate the blood over your life appropriate the blood over your life remember bible said that confess confess one to another at this time don't confess to any man confess to jesus the christ of god that he is the only one who has the legal right and the legal mandate to forgive sin. He has paid the ultimate price for you and I. He came in and he was able to buy you and I. He bought our souls from the world as a marketplace. He was able to trade and buy us. And he has placed a premium over our lives. We are priceless. We are precious to him. He laid down his life and he brought us back onto himself. He is the only one who qualified. Bible says in the book of Philippians, the chapter 2, verse 10, that by the mention of the name Jesus, the Christ of the living God, every knee bow, every knee bow, Jesus said that he is the only way, the truth to life. I'm telling you, it is only Jesus the Christ who can forgive you, who can cleanse you, who can wash you. Lift up a prayer in his name, in his name, in his name. Pray in his name that you will be forgiven. Every evidence against you will be acquitted. Pray that every emotional sins, imaginary sins, sins of the heart, known sin, unknown sin, any character that has grieved the Holy Ghost, that has grieved the Spirit of God living within your spirit, let the blood of Jesus atone and let you be forgiven. Somebody lift up a living prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Zed de boshe brebe veli alga dalia de lele le boshi me de dian doshe brebe veli adosa zed de ke tele boshe bre tele le boshe bre te ke te zed le boshe bre kalian doshe veli an dalala la bozanta ianta la brande ke de bosha bram pa palia bahata in the name of Jesus yes Lord rade de de bosha in the name of Jesus. Sharis McKay, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are welcome, uh, our sister. You are welcome. God bless you for joining us. God bless you for joining us. We are learning about altars today, and you'll be a blessing for joining. You'll be a blessing for joining. You'll be a blessing for joining. In the name of Jesus, Kalabosha. Pray to be forgiven. Pray to be cleansed from every kind of unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus, pray to be forgiven. Pray to be loose. Pray to be forgiven in the name of Jesus. Radoshi, brem bebe kalia doshe gelia de celebosi in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, we thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Let every kind of evidences against us be dropped. Let it be acquitted. Let it be forgiven. Known and unknown sins. Known and unknown sins. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Known and unknown sins. In the name of Jesus. Let it be forgiven. Ma dele bosa. Brem belian doshe belebeza brandi kadoshe. Rababa ikai kaloshe. In the name of Jesus, let every known and unknown sins be forgiven. Let every known and unknown sins be forgiven. In the name of Jesus, let any deliberate act of sin be forgiven. In the name of Jesus, let every known and unknown sin be forgiven. Let any deliberate act of sin be forgiven. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Emotional sins, sins of the mind, sins of the, <clears throat> sins of the thoughts, things that we have spoken out of us bible said that out of the abundance of the hearts the mouth speak bible said that we shall give account of every idle word that comes out of us that comes out of us for 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 the body to be unclean comes from within father we pray that any sins from within any sins from within we pray in the name of jesus that let the precious blood cleanse us let the precious blood wash us let the precious blood cleanse us let the precious blood wash us in the name of jesus now we pray in the accomplished works of jesus the christ that let every evidences against us any evidences against anyone who has joined us let it be dropped let it be dropped right now in the name of Jesus let every evidence be dropped let every evidence be dropped in the name of Jesus the Christ of the living God in the name of Jesus the Christ of the living God amen and amen we are praying we are praying that the Holy Spirit of God will have his perfect way the perfect will of Jesus the Christ of God should be fulfilled you are praying that Jesus should have his perfect way the Holy Spirit of God should have 
his perfect way. As long as Jesus is having his perfect way, the Holy Spirit of God is automatically having his perfect way. We are praying in Jesus' name that the will of our Father be done and that his perfect counsel should stand for tonight. His perfect counsel should stand for tonight. Somebody lift up a prayer. Zelebosh, Brembebegadia do Shabam, Belebe Satalagadan, the Babran de Gadosh, Mende de de Lebrenke de Bosch, Rebebelia Gololobosham, Bramba Valia de Sebem, Zendelebe Shebren de Catam, Rapa Palia Bram Palia do Shabam, in the name of Jesus, O Spirit of the Living God, Holy Spirit of the Living God, we pray in the name of Jesus, the only legal name given unto us the sons of God here on earth which is in this name we lift up a living prayer that let the spirit of God bear witness with our spirit that we are sons we are not bastard we have a sense of whom we are loved we are appreciated in the name of Jesus the Christ let the spirit of God in the name of Jesus through Jesus the Christ have his perfect will his perfect counsel be fulfilled and be done his perfect counsel be fulfilled and be done be fulfilled and be done, be fulfilled and be done, be fulfilled and be done in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Kadia Bata, Melebo Shabram Baba Kalia Dosha, Medelebo Shabram Baba Kalia Desi, Lebo Sabran Talia Tam, in the name of Jesus. Rada Do Bram Baba Lia Gado Shelebem, Rete Telian Talian Tolebo Shebrin, Delebelebo Sabrandi, Rika Baba Ian Tolebosha, in the name of Jesus. Our last prayer, pray and commit yourself, commit your heart, commit your body, soul, and spirit into the hands of Jesus. Pray and commit yourself. Our last prayer for this session is that pray for your own self. Commit your hands, commit yourself into the hands of Jesus, the Christ of God. Somebody pray for yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Magdelebosha, Zeketene Boshe, Matata, the Andeshe de Lebozi, Rampa Pariakata. Father, we pray for the Spirit to be able to abide within the confines of your way. We pray that you will permit us to stand in the counsel of the Lord. To be able to hear and to declare for the change our garment, cleanse our feet, the proper garment, the holy garment, the garment that emits, reflects, and brings forth the glory and the beauty of Jesus, the Christ of the living God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Madele Moshe, Brenda Belia Gadole Bosha, Bramba Bagadia Dosha, Mete E Kali Alcanto, Libra and Tata Talia Gada. Zen Delele Bosch, Brempe Pelia do Shaham, Zekele Bosch, Brempe Pelia Gadesi, Lebra Papa, Bram Papa, Cabram Papa, Adosha, in the name of Jesus, Malabala Bosch, Bram Baba Dali Adosh, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Suris, Suris, Suris. Uh, today, I didn't want to prophesy, I want to go into the teachings and then we will go into prayer but let me do this for um suris suris maki suris maki suris maki please if you can hear me if you can hear me kindly place your right hand your right hand on your chest suri if you can hear me suris Suris Maki, please, if you can hear me, type something for me to know that you can hear me. Type something for me to know that you can hear me. You can type Amen or I am here. Suris Maki, please, if you are on, type something. Okay, so please, uh, Suris, as you have re responded by saying yes, put your right hand on your chest. Okay, your right hand on your chest. And then let me do this uh, declarative prayer for you. Just your right hand on your chest. Your right hand on your chest. Let me do a declarative prayer for you. In the name of Jesus. Please, if you place your right hand there, let me know that you are done. Okay? 
If you place your right hand there, let me know that you are done. Okay, yes, I know you are here, but put your right hand on your chest. Put your right hand on your chest. When you do, write me, I am done. Because I want to make a declaration over you. I want to make a declaration over you. So please, when you are done, kindly write to me, I am done. I want to make a declaration. While our, our sister uh, prepares to type that she's done, please let us get our Bibles, our pens, our books ready. We are going into the word of our Father. We are going into the word of our Father. Okay, Father, I pray for Suris. I pray for Suris Mackey. I lift up a living prayer in Jesus, the only living Son, who has qualified us in himself to be kings and priests before our Father. I pray that whatever heart's desire that is on the heart of Suris, I pray in the name of Jesus that it will come into fulfillment for her, even as she has connected and joined us today. Father, just as I saw in the realm of the Spirit, so have I asked her to do so. She has placed her right hand on her chest, and I pray that let that which is on her heart be answered with divine speed in the name of Jesus, the Christ of the living God. Amen and amen. Series, the Lord God will answer you. Whatever is on your heart, whatever you have placed before him as your father, there is coming a divine speed. Your Lord God will give you an answer with speed. Okay. Keep well. Do well to share. Do well to share. Let us get into the word of God. So, last week, I welcome everyone who has joined. I welcome everyone. Uh, I will not be able to mention all the names. But anyone who has joined in the love of our Father, the living God bless you. Keep sharing, keep inviting. God bless you for doing so. Amen and amen. La, uh, was it on last week? Yeah, we started something on altars. We actually looked at the definition of altars. We considered some types of altars. We considered the function of altars. Um, no, we, we, uh, we didn't consider, yeah, I think we did consider um, characteristics of altars characteristics of all text and then uh, on Saturday I made mention of the fact that today today we are going to talk about the horns of the altar horns of the altar we came to know that altars are places of sacrifice what place it is a legal place of what sacrifice Exodus chapter 20 verse 24 you saw that altars are legal places of sacrifice we also came to know that an altar is a legal place of intersection between the upper world and then the lower wells. So the altar serves as a middleman who is able to join the two together. We actually decoded so many uh, stuff concerning what an altar is. And we also got to learn something that the altar of your family is located at the gate of your family. That is where decisions are made. That is where people are wounded. That is where people are overthrown. That is where people are enthroned, etc. It takes place over there. Even for our own liberty, for us to be freed from sin as our master, Jesus Christ needed to come to the gate and have the enemy defeated at the gate in order to free us, in order to make us free. And the gate is one of the very sensitive things. We saw that every altar has a minister or a priest who attends to it. But today we are going to talk about the horns of the altar. The horns of the altar. The horns of the altar. Please, because we are talking about altars, as I'm talking about altars, you need to understand blood and you need to understand souls. Because altars deals with blood and blood needs altars to function and then altars has direct effect on souls okay altars they do have direct effect 
on souls. And every human being has a, a, a soul. Every human being has a soul. So, and there is an altar. The, the point is, probably you are not aware of the altar of your home, but there is an altar which has a direct effect on you because you have a soul. Because you have a soul. We spoke of the truth that there is a golden altar in the heavens. And we spoke that there is an altar on earth called the altar of the earth. This altar makes it possible for spirit beings to be able to come into the earth region or the earth domain. Mingle themselves and have themselves involved in things so that we can get a desired expected result. Okay. Yes. And we spoke of uh, evil altars are there. People who are into all kinds of things, they have altars. Great men and great women in life. People who had great impacts in their time. These are men of altars because altars serves as a place where a spirit is engaged. And I have repeatedly been saying that for you to do extraordinary, for you to make impact, for you to leave a long-lasting mark in your generation, you need a spirit from the upper world to be behind you, to be able to do well and to make an impact, not just an ordinary impact, but a generational impact or a transgenerational impact. In fact, occult men, evil men, good men, etc., they are all people of altars. Before even a false prophet, who is false because the source is not God, that is why the prophet is false. Even a false prophet whose source is not God, okay, whose source is not God, can even engage his altar and be empowered to come and prophesy with accuracy. So, altars are very sensitive things in our life. So, come with me. It is a teaching service. I will, I will just give you a recap of some of the things we have already said. It is a teaching service, so I will take it calmly and i'll be breaking it down for our understanding such topics we don't preach it we teach it so i do expect that you will get a book you get a pen and you write things down for your own benefit for your own liberty it is a very sensitive topic we are we are considering god bless you come with me to genesis chapter 9 verse 4 genesis chapter 9 verse 4 Genesis chapter 9, verse 4. I'm reading. Genesis chapter 9. Please, uh, if our administrator can be typing the scriptures, if not, uh, Debbie or Tembi can be helping us write down the scriptures. Okay. Okay, so um, anyone can be helping us with the scriptures. Genesis chapter 9, verse 4. Please follow me very, very carefully. It is a teaching service, so please follow me very carefully. It said that, but flesh with the life in it, which is the blood, thereof you shall not eat. The key point here is this, that the life of the flesh is in the blood okay so genesis chapter 9 verse 4 but flesh with life in it which is the blood okay so the life of the flesh is the blood the life of the flesh is the blood okay so the blood contains a life uh, last week i was saying it and this life of the flesh is kept inside the blood and according to genesis chapter 9 verse 4 the word of god is saying that the life of the flesh which is the blood okay which is the blood so considering the book of leviticus chapter 17 verses 11 we saw yes the, the blood is life perfect the blood is life all what i am about to explain has been shortened for us the blood is life okay the blood is life so genesis chapter 9 verse 4 is proving to us that the blood is life now anybody who has life is living okay 
anybody who has life is living and a living thing can cry a living thing can move a living thing can do a lot of stuff so eh, almost everything that can be attributed to a living thing can be attributed to blood because blood is life okay so now one of the wonderful things about blood is this genesis chapter 4 genesis chapter 4 verses 10 genesis chapter 4 verse 10 let us look consider only one of the qualities of blood genesis chapter 4 verse 10 genesis chapter 4 verse 10 i'm reading genesis chapter 4 verse 10 and he said what hast thou done the voice of thy brother's blood cries unto me from the ground okay so from genesis chapter 4 verse 10 we can see that the blood has what a voice i'm not the one telling you it is written in your bible and he said what has that done the voice of your brother's blood okay so even the blood has a voice Listen to me. I want you to understand this truth before we get to the home. Because if you get it here, it will make it easy for you to understand the home. Okay? So the blood is life. And this blood, which is life, has a voice. Okay? And a voice can be for you or can be against you. Okay? So for instance, the altar in heaven, the altar that is before God, the altar called the golden altar that has the blood of Jesus on it. The blood of Jesus also has a voice. This voice that is in the blood of Jesus is not a voice that is speaking against you. It is a voice that is speaking for you in this dispensation of grace. That voice found in the blood of Jesus is a speaking blood. The blood of Jesus is not a damp blood it is not a muted blood the blood of jesus carries lives not one life but lives and because the blood carries lives it is a speaking blood the blood has a voice yes baby the blood has a voice and in the case of genesis chapter 4 verses 10 the voice of one brother through the blood was speaking against another brother Cain and abel Cain killing abel abel's blood spoke against Cain. okay so the blood has a voice the blood has a voice and the voice can either speak for you or can speak against you i want you to understand some of this basic truth because concerning the horns horns deals with blood horns deals with blood okay so understand this very thing so now let us go into the home let us go into the homes. Let us go into the homes. We want to look at the functions. I have actually jumped a lot of things because it is Hebrew, 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 and I'm, I don't want to confuse anyone. And I don't have a whiteboard here to be drawing and explaining. They're doing the calculations here and there. Maybe in the future, by the good grace of God, we'll be able to do this. But today, I want to jump all those parts. So now, let us go into the word of god what are the functions of horns around altar why does an altar which is a gateway which is an intercession which is a legal platform for sacrifice why does it need a horn why does it need a horn okay so now come with me to exodus the book of exodus chapter 29 verses 12 Exodus 29, Exodus 29, verse 12. Please follow it steadily. It is a teaching and you'll be amazed what God is going to unveil to you through Jesus, his beloved son. Okay, so now, Exodus chapter 29, verses 12. Exodus chapter 29, verses 12. I am reading. And thou shalt take off the blood. And thou shalt take off the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with your finger and pour the blood beside the bottom of the altar. Okay, so now, according to this verse, 
Thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar. So I want to ask a question. Why is God asking that the blood should be put on the horns of the altar? So now we have seen that altars have horns. But why is our father asking the prophet Moses to apply the blood to the horn and not to any part of the altar but, but to the horn? Why is our father saying that the blood should be poured or should be around the altar? He said that thou shalt put it upon the horns. You shall put the blood upon the horns. Why, why is that so? Why did our father instruct the prophet Moses to put blood, blood, the, the, the horn is a weapon. Yes, it's true. Horns are weapons. Horns are weapons. One of the truths of, uh, of horns is that it is a weapon. But why is it that our father was asking that a blood should be poured upon the horn? Anyone can help us. Just two seconds. If you, you have uh, any idea why blood was supposed to be applied at the horn. Anyone having an idea? Anyone with an idea? To bring life to the altar. Perfect. Perfect. So that is why, God bless you, Prince. God bless you, Prince. That is why I started by saying that blood is life. Okay? So the moment we are applying blood to the altar, we are applying life to the, to the what? To the home. Okay, so the, that's why I started by breaking it down with blood. Yes, to give or bring life onto the horn. Stephen, you are also 100% right. Okay, so what it means is that the blood, the life is being given to the horn. Okay, so Prince said that to bring life to the altar, perfect. Uh, Stephen, to give yeah, to the horn, perfect. Blood contains life. So to give life to the horns, perfect. Now I know that we are learning and we are going somewhere. God bless us. God bless us so much that we are getting somewhere. We are learning. Okay. So the horn, the horn needs life. Okay. So now the horn. Yes, the power of the blood and the horn. It's more powerful together. Perfect. So now, the first thing I want you to know about the horn, number one point you should know about the horns of the altar is that it is the life of the altar. First point. First point. That the horns are the life of the altar. Okay? The horn is the life of the altar. And you can break it down again that the horn is the container that contains the life of the altar okay the life of the altar is contained in the horn okay the life of the altar the blood the life is contained in the horn so every altar carries a particular life and the life of that altar is kept inside the horn that was being symbolized by the blood being applied to the horn. So one of the first truths, not facts, one of the first truths about horns around altar is that it is the home of the altar's life. Okay, the life of the altar is kept inside the horn. Okay, so let me tell you, your family horn, or your family altar, okay, there is a horn on it. I said every altar has a horn, every altar, okay. So your family altar, it has a horn. And the life of the altar, what makes the altar strong, active, to be able to do things for people or against people, is kept inside the horn. Why? Because the horn is the container that contains the life of the altar. 
that contains the blood of the altar, that contains the life of the altar. So listen to me very carefully. The horns are the container or the life of the altar. So where is the life of the altar kept? The answer is the home. The answer is the home. The life of the altar is contained in the home. Debbie, perfect, excellent. Okay, so that is the first thing you should know about the, the, the horns of the altar. Yes, it is a generational blessing. God is blessing us in this generation with some of this wonderful insight. And we, we thank Jesus Christ. We thank the Holy Spirit of God. And we thank our Father for blessing men like unto us with such grace. With such grace. That is the first point. The life of the altar is there. Number one. Number one. Number two. Number two on the altars. On the altars, let us take the book of Zechariah. Second point, we are learning about altars, so the, the, the horns of the altars. Our focus is on the horns. We have established the first point. We have established the first point is that the life of the altar is the horn. Now, do you know that biologically proven? right biologically proven the moment your heart stop beating you will die do you know that it is biologically proven that the moment your heart stops beating you will die and the word of god also proves it according to proverbs chapter 4 bible says that keep your heart with what diligence out of your heart comes issues of life Okay, out of your heart comes issues of life. Also confirming to that which is biologically proven that your heart pertains to your life. So let me tell you, the heart of the altar is the home. Because that is what is holding the life of the altar. What is holding us, human beings, biologically proven is our heart okay so what is holding the altar of your family is the horn the horn is the heart of the altar listen to me very carefully the horn is the heart of the altar as a human being when your heart stop beating life is gone okay so whenever the heart of the altar which is the horn is gone there is no life in the altar so please, tonight, listen to me. When you are praying concerning altars, the horn is the heart of the altar. Perfect. Tembi, perfect. 100%. Okay. So if tonight, maybe you have been attacking family altars in the wrong way. Tonight, I want you to understand this. That whenever you are praying concerning altars of your home, etc., please and please, at first, it was out of ignorance, okay? You do not go attacking altars like that. You will be wounded and you may be overthrown. Suddenly, you will start losing some things you have acquired because the altar is located at the gate and the gate is for the elders. They are the people who make decisions, they, they overthrow, they establish, they enthrone, etc. So if you attack and you don't attack well, you will be wounded and you will be overthrown. You will suddenly fall down from a higher place down. And physically, you will see that certain things have started going wayward. Certain things are not going the right way. Certain things may not be going the right way. It is because... When you are praying concerning altars, you don't go the right way. So Jesus Christ gave us a principle. Jesus Christ gave us a principle. What is the principle? Come with me to the book of Matthew chapter 12, verses 29. Matthew chapter 12, verses 29. We are learning, okay? Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verses 29. Matthew chapter 12, verses 29. I'm reading the 29. Matthew chapter 12, verses 29. I'm reading the 29. Or else, 
how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house look at the beautiful principle jesus has laid as laid down for us matthew chapter 12 verse 29 this same verse can be seen in mark chapter 3 verse 27 you can see the same verse in mark chapter 3 verses 27 according to this principle jesus is saying this if you enter into a house okay matthew chapter 12 verse 29 if you enter into a house and if you want to go and untie your goose if you want to free your destiny from your home from your house if you want to be free if you want your star to shine etc jesus says that don't go attacking like that you must first of all identify the strong man of the house i'm reading it again matthew chapter 12 29 or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man okay so now the strong man of the altar is where who can tell me where the strong man of the altar is who can type for me where the strong man of the altar is so far what we have learned i think it is clear that we should know where the strong man of the altar is so where is where is the strong man of the altar where is the strong man of the altar now we are dealing with altars perfect the horn okay the horn so in this contest the horn is the strongest man okay the horn because the horn is the life of the altar so it is the horn that keeps the the altar moving okay that is why i said that the heart the the, the horn is the heart of the altar and i used example that as a human being if your heart stopped beating you would die so the heart of the altar is the horn okay so the horn is the lifeline of the altar so for you to be able to defeat the altar you need to deal with the strong man of the altar where the life is where the strength of the altar is okay the strength of the altar is inside the horn the life of the altar is inside the horn the blood is kept in the horn the horn is the home or the host of the life okay so the strong man of every altar is the horn okay so the next point you need to understand is that the strong man of every altar is the horn so jesus christ said matthew chapter 12 verses 29 the principle is this for you to to be freed from the altar of your home for you to lose your goose for you to lose your destiny for you to be free for your star to shine for you to bring forth uh, many wonderful things yeah the horn keeps the altar alive yes for you to bring forth wonderful things out of the altar of your home jesus said you must first of all bind the strong man and in the context of the altar the strong man of the altar is the horn perfect yes the strong man of every altar is the horn you are you are right krista you are very right okay so the strong man of every altar is the horn so according to matthew chapter 12 verses 29 for you to lose your goose for you to be free from from the powers of your home for you to be free for you to bring forth glorious things for you to manifest the original purpose of god for your life for your star to shine etc you must first of all deal with the strong man so the strong man of the altar that is against you is the home so the best way or the first approach when dealing with altars of the home is the home because that is the strong man don't forget this principle 
you do not go and attack like that they, you will be wounded you must first of all bind the strong man so the strong man of every altar is the horn so matthew chapter 12 verses 29 jesus christ is saying that for you to lose yourself from the altar of your home you must first of all bind the strong man which is the horn which is the horn you must bind it the horn is serving as the heart of the altar and yes exactly you are right my sister series yes so you must be able to deal with it so this is the principle so please maybe at first you didn't know about it so you have been attacking altars anyhow and you have seen the the replications or the effects of some of the prayers you had prayed exactly yes the first approach is to bind the horn 100 percent debbie you are learning you are learning very good i am happy that we have people here who are learning by the good grace of god the first approach is to bind the horn which is the powerhouse of the altar which is the heart of the altar which is the life of the altar okay matthew chapter 12 verse 29 that is the principle so please from today if you are bringing on altars make sure you bind the horn because that is the heart or that is the life that is the power now the next point about altars why it will even help you to know why it is necessary to bind it first okay so come with me come with me to the book of zachariah zachariah chapter 1 verses 17 to 19 come with me to the book of zachariah chapter 1 verses 17 to 19 the book of zachariah chapter 1 verses 17 to 19 the book of zechariah chapter 1 verses 17 to 19 i'm reading from the verses 17 zechariah chapter 1 verses 17 18 and 19 so i'm reading from verse 17 cry yet saying thus says the lord of hosts my city's true prosperity shall shall yet be spread abroad and the lord shall comfort zion and shall choose jerusalem listen verses 17 zachariah chapter 1 verse 17 what a wonderful scripture this is a prophecy god is talking about the prosperity of his people and how how they are how they will be spread abroad how they will make money how they will prosper in fact everyone would love to hear such a prophecy that hey you this you sister you this brother you you are going to be the next billionaire you are going to be the next trillionaire everybody wants to be financially blessed everybody and this is the prophecy here zachariah chapter 1 verse 17. god is saying that he's going to prosper his people and when he prospered them, they will, they will be spread abroad. It means that they will have a lot of branches, businesses, etc. They will do well. They will employ people. Let us go to the verses 18 and see what happened. Verses 18. Then I lifted up my eyes and I saw, behold, four horns. Immediately the prophecy came. Immediately the, the intent and the mind of God concerning Israel as a family. Okay, Israel is a family. Okay, when God released the prophecy to Israel as one family, as a family, immediately four horns, four horns were released. And verses 19, let us see what happened. And verse 19, and I said unto the angel, Zachariah the prophet who saw, is now asking his ministry angel, that ah, what is this? Why is it that God is talking about the prosperity of his people and suddenly I've seen four horns? And the angel said, I will explain to you for you to understand. Now, the angel said, What be this? And the angel answered Zachariah and said, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. <laughs> What are the functions of horn again? They scatter. 
they will scatter. Okay, God has prophesied prosperity. God has prophesied marriage for you. God has prophesied. God has through His servant giving you a good prophecy. You will marry your finances. You go where you are going to finish your school, etc. Blah 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 blah. So many things have been said. The moment this prophecy went forth, a certain horn has been released to make sure that they will scatter that promise they will they are going to make sure that that prophecy doesn't come to pass that is the work of the horn they scatter okay so every animal that has horns they they they, they scatter things with their horns Okay, so the next thing about horns is that they scatter. So one of the reasons why horns are on the altar is that they are used to scatter good things. Especially if the altar is an evil altar. Okay, they will use it to scatter every good thing that is supposed to come the way of the people in the family. So one of the reasons why some of us, you can go for a job interview and it will seem that you are the one chosen, you are the one selected, you are the one everything. And from nowhere, you will see that the whole thing has been scattered. Tonight, I want you to know that it is coming from the horn of your own family. That is where they scatter things from. That is where they scatter things from okay you can save money to go and do something and and suddenly something will happen and your finances will scatter it is the function of the horn you can be in a relationship all is going well suddenly and something happens and the guy has lost interest and the lady has lost interest whatever you have watered whatever you have planted suddenly has been scattered this is the work of the horns Yes, horns are used to scatter good things, okay? This is the work of the horns. They will use it to scatter. Exactly. So horns are the source that is used in scattering. Every good thing that is coming your way, the horns of your altar, they will use it to scatter. They will scatter it away. <laughs> so tonight I want you to learn that anytime good things are coming, things seems to be going and suddenly something happens and it scatters. The source is the horn of your family. The horn of your family altar. The horn of your family altar. Remember it. Don't forget it. Learn it. Bible says that buy the truth. Buy this truth and do not sell it. Keep it. Okay? And grow with it. So listen to me. When you are going to pray and attack the, the altars of your family. You don't go and attack it like that. You must first of all bind the horn. Matthew 12, 29. That is the first principle. Bind the strong man. Bind the, where the life is. Where the, the life of the altar is, is the horn. Bind it. Bind it. Break it. Yes, I will pray exactly. That should be your first focus. Because if you don't bind it, if you don't do it, Jesus said you, you will not be able to lose your destiny. You will not be able to go and get your goals. You will not be able to manifest the glorious destiny you have been mandated to. So if you enter into a strong man's house, before you can lose your goals, be, before you can untie your destiny, you must first of all deal and bind the strong man. Before your family can leave you and, and set you go free, before your family can lose you for you to shine as God has mandated, before your star before your star can shine before you can do where Jesus Christ said that bind the horns of your family altar in prayer in prayer bind them in prayer bind them until you bind them in prayer every work of yours is cause zero every effort you are making is zero bind them Bind the horns of your family altar. Yes, Tembi. You need to bind them in prayer. Matthew chapter 12, verses 29. That is the principle. Don't go and attack the altar like that because it is located at the gate. It is the elders who are there. You will be wounded. You will be overthrown. Things will go against you. But on your knees, okay, on your knees, begin to bind the horns of the altar. Because if you don't bind them, they will scatter every good thing you have gathered. They will scatter them. They will scatter them. They will deal with them. They will deal with them. Come with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verses 17. We are learning. 
the horns eh, the horns of the altar very important very important Deuteronomy chapter 33 verses 17 Deuteronomy chapter 33 verses 17 Deuteronomy chapter 33 verses 17 I'm reading Deuteronomy 33 verse 17 I'm reading Exactly not we need to bind the horns of our ancestors by prayer you need to bind it so i'm reading deuteronomy 33 deuteronomy 33 verses 17 his glory his glory is like the firstlings of his bullock and his horns are like the horns of the unicorn okay and his horns are like the horns of the unicorn with them he shall push the people together to the ends of the world my goodness deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 17 listen the word of god is saying that with the horns okay it is in your bible deuteronomy 33 17 you can open it and check it it is there he said that with the horn he shall push the people away i'm telling you so with the horn the horn is not only going to scatter with the horn they will push you back as you are progressing in life somebody in your family is going to use the family the the altar of your family somebody is going to use the horn of that altar to push you back in life it is written down here he said that and with the horn he will push the people he will push them Deuteronomy 33 17 and with them he shall push the people together unto the ends of the world you seems to be progressing suddenly you are going back suddenly you are going back sometimes you can dream and you see yourself you are wearing a school uniform a school you have completed long time ago god loves you god is showing you that hey the horns of your family is pushing you back so that is why god will give you a dream that you are wearing an old school uniform my brother my sister when you see this thing don't take it lightly they are pulling you back with the horn they will push you back as you are progressing forward as you are moving forward with the horn they will push you back horns are very sensitive ne never joke with horns never joke with horns never downplay them it is the heart of the altar it is the container that contains the life of the altar it is the ultimate aspect of the altar it is the heartbeat of the altar i said just as when the heart of a human being seizes the human being will die the same way when the horn which is the heart of the altar is is being attacked when you are to put the the horn or the heart of the altar off the altar will die the same way the heart of a human being when the heart stops beating the human being dies when the heart of the altar which is the horn when it stops beating the the altar is dead that is the strong man of the altar jesus said for you to deal with the heartbeat of the altar which is the horn bind it bind it it will stop beating it will die we have seen it the tournament the 317 it will push you back first kings first kings chapter 22 verses 11 First Kings chapter 22. First Kings chapter 22 verses 11. Yes, bind it up. Bind it up before they scatter, before they push you back. Bind, bind it up before they scatter, before they push you back. Somebody listening, somebody learning, bind it, bind it before they push you back, before they scatter. You seem to be making the progress and suddenly things are going back bind it bind it before they push you back before they scatter all what you have gathered so first Kings chapter 22 verses 11 and zedekiah the son of chinana made him horns of iron listen this man has made a horn out of iron and he said thus says the lord with these you shall push Syrians until they are consumed my goodness <laughs> with this iron horn or with this horn of iron okay or with this 
are horns made out of iron. This is what God is saying. God says, with these horns, you are going to push Syria back in life until they are consumed, until they are no more. I'm telling you, the horns of your altar, the horns of your family can be used to push you back in life until you are no more, until you die a miserable death, until you give up on God and give up on your own life and you give up on yourself. The cause and the reason, the source is the horns. They can use it to push you back in life. They can use it to hit you and scatter everything you have gathered. They can use it to scatter and destroy what you have gathered. They can use it to push you back in life. So we have seen from the book of First Kings chapter 22 verses 11, he said that with that horn, with that horn, with that horn, push Syria, push Syria until they are consumed. In other words, he's saying that deal with Syria until they are finished. With this horn, deal with them until they are finished. My brother, my sister, until you bind the horns of your family altar, it will deal with you till you are finished. It will deal with you till you are done. It will deal with you till you go and hang yourself. It will deal with you till you see life to be no good. Or it will deal with you until you, you begin to say that, Oh my God, I don't even believe there is a God. It is the horn of your altar. The horn of your family altar is dealing with you. It will push you back until you are consumed. It will push you back until you are consumed. Please listen. Horns are very serious when it comes to altar. It is the heartbeat of the altar. Do you want to have a positive change? Do you want to go and lose your goose, your finances, your marriage, your anything you want to go and lose? It is tied to the horn. The horn, the horn, Jesus said, bind it, bind the strong man. That is the, the strong man of the altar is the horn. Bind it, deal with it. Don't go and attack the altar like that. Please deal with the strong man first. Deal with the strong man first. Some of us, we have been praying wrong prayers for a very long time. Begin to pray concerning your altar and you are attacking, you are attacking, you are attacking. You will be wounded. No, attack, attack the horns. Bind the horns in the name of Jesus. That is where the place is. Another thing about the horns of the altar. The next thing about the horns of the altar, that the horn of the altar is a place of safety and mercy. Okay? The horns of the altar, it is a place of safety and mercy. The horns of the altar, it is a place of safety and mercy. So come with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 50. 1 Kings chapter 1. Verses 50. First Kings chapter 1, verse 50. First Kings chapter 1, verses 50. We are learning about the horns of the altar. Okay. And we have said that the next point is that the horns of the altar is a place for safety and mercy. It is a place for safety and mercy. It is a place for safety and mercy. First Kings chapter 1, verses 50. I'm reading. I'm reading. And Adonijah feared because of Solomon and arose and went and caught hold on the horns of the altar. Listen, Adonijah was so much afraid that king solomon will kill him okay so when he knew that solomon will kill him what did he do he ran according to this verse he ran and he caught hold of the altar and when he got hold of the altar bible said that he did something let us read first kings chapter 1 verses 50 again and see what he did verses 50 and adonijah feared because of solomon and arose and went and caught hold on the horns of the altar. The moment Adonijah laid his hands on the horns of the altar, he couldn't die. Solomon could not kill him. The reason is that the, the moment a person lay hands on the, on the horns 
of the altar. You have laid hands on a place of safety and mercy. The mercies of God comes from there. You have laid hands on a place of safety and mercy. The horns of the altar is a place of safety and mercy. Yes, Debbie, yes. The horns of the altar, it is a place of safety and mercy. Let us go to the same first Kings chapter 2, verses 28. Chapter 2, verses 28. First Kings chapter 2, verses 28. First Kings chapter 2, verses 28. Now we have seen how Adonijah feared that he would die. And immediately he got hold of the horns of the altar. His life was spared. Why? Because it is a place of safety and mercy. Okay, so 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 28. I'm reading 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 28. 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 28. Then tidings came unto Joab. For Joab had turned after Adonijah. Though he turned not after Absalom, and Joab fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord, and hold on the horns of the altar. Read it in your own Bible, and you will see. Joab, you see, now Joab, Joab is one of the chief soldiers that was in uh, in the army of King Solomon. Okay, and he was after those who threatened to take away the life of Solomon. So, according to this verse, 1 Kings chapter 2, 28, a message came, and Joab started pursuing those who want to do away with the king Solomon. And the moment they heard it, Bible said that uh, Absalom and Joab fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord. And caught hold, he laid his hands on the horns of the altar. Why? Because it is a place of mercy. So when the army commander was after his life, he ran into the house of the Lord. And he went to where the altar of the Lord is located. And when he got there, he didn't touch any part of the altar. But he only touched the horn. It is in your Bible. Please check he touched the horns of the altar. Why? Because it is a place of safety and mercy. It is a place of safety and mercy. You see, you need to know this truth. You need to understand. So that when you are building an altar, when you, you approach the altar as the gateway between the heavens and the earth, you are going to know that one of the things you need to do is that you need to have a name for your altar. We saw that every altar has a name, so you must give it a name. Every altar has a horn. You must have horns for your altar. We are going to see what are these horns. That Now we are learning that these horns are the heartbeat of the uh, altar, etc. as we are learning. Now we have also seen that this altar can be used to scatter and push things away. So when the, the altar is evil, they will be used to do evil. They will scatter good things. They will scatter a lot of good things away from your life. They will push you back in life. Okay? When the altar is evil. When the altar is evil. And one of the ways to also have the mercies of God is through the horns of the altar. That is why the altar that is before our Father has horns on it. Revelation chapter 9 verse 13. The horns, the golden altar before our Father has horns on it. It is a place of safety and mercy. It is a place of safety and mercy. When you lay hands on it by faith, okay, God our Father will show you mercy. When you lay hands on, on the horns, that is before our Father by faith, you have come into a place of safety. Is someone threatening you? Has someone cursed you? Has someone actually decided that you I will make sure this year will not run out and you will die? Then the key, the answer to dealing with this issue is this. Go on your knees. And when you go on your knees, by faith, get hold of the horns that are on the altar before God. There is an altar before God. Revelation 9.13 is there. 
and this altar before our father has four horns four horns we have seen that this horn is a place of safety and mercy so if somebody has cursed you if things are not going right for you you need to go and lay hands on this altar by faith see how joab was running Joab ran and he entered into the house of the Lord. And when he entered into the house of the Lord, he located the altar and touched the horn. I don't know the problem. I don't know what is after you. I don't know the family cares that is dealing with people in the family. That is also fighting you. But the key is please run to the house of the Lord. Tonight go on your knees and by faith lay your hands on the horns that are before our father. There is an altar before him. Him. this altar has four horns please touch these horns by faith remember without faith we cannot please him hebrews 11 verses 6 without faith you can't please god tonight you can with faith lay your hands on the horns that is before our father and when you lay your hands on cry out unto him in the name of jesus and say my father in jesus name there is a curse in my family somebody has cursed me somebody has laid a limitations on me there is a generational thing in my family that doesn't people to get married that doesn't allow people to go far but tonight even as i have come before you by faith i lay my hands on the horns before you and i pray that oh Oh God, show me mercy, show me mercy, show me mercy, because I have laid my hands on the horns that is before the altar. I have laid my hands on the horns that is before you, my brother, my sister. If you lay your hands on these horns, God will give you safety from that case. The mercies of God will be stronger above any form of judgment. Tonight, I, I am encouraging you, go and lay your hands on the horns. That is before God. There is an altar before our Father, and there is a horn. I said that every altar has a horn. Don't be deceived. Every altar, every type of altar, whether in the heavens or on earth, it has a, a horn. Revelation chapter 9, 13. The altar before God has horns. Please, tonight, go and grab that horn. And tell him, Jesus, somebody is after my life. My ex want to kill me. My father want to kill me. Somebody want to use me for juju. Somebody would like to use me for voodoo stuff. Please save me. It is a place of safety. It is a place of mercy. And it is only the mercy of God that can exempt you from failure. It is only the mercy of God that can deliver you from shame. Somebody, I've given you the key tonight. Do you want to be exempted from family curses? Do you want to be free from issues of struggles and pain and repetition? Then tonight, by faith in Jesus the Christ, go on your knees and touch the horn that is before our father touch the horn that is before our father there is an altar in his presence there is an altar in his presence there are four horns on it lay your hands on any of the four lay your hands on it by faith lay your hands on any of the four and your life will never be the same god will give you safety god is going to cause his mercies and his mercies will exempt you from the curse in that family everybody in that family is a drunkard you, you have even started drinking but tonight if you can lay your hands on the horn that is before our father the mercies of god will exempt you from that drunkenness the mercies of god will exempt you from that shame from that poverty from that lack from that curse that is repetitive in the family line i've given you the key it is the horn the horn the horn the horn touch it debbie you want to be free then tonight go and touch the horn go and touch the horn not the horn of your family but the horn of the altar before God the horn of the altar before God by faith go on your knees and touch it by faith touch that horn by faith Debbie touch it by faith yes Kwame it is the key touch it by faith that daddy as I have gotten hold of this altar deliver me Suris, yes, go and lay hands on that altar. That is where your deliverance will be coming from. God will give you a strange mercy and the mercies of our Father will exempt you from any kind of evil. Any kind of evil, that is where it is. That is where it is. Another thing you need to know about altar, please, be writing it down. Be writing it down. Be writing it down. It is for your learning. 
this thing that I'm sharing with you, hardly will you hear from somewhere. Hardly will you hear from somewhere. I'm teaching it. Uh, but I will not give you all the information anyway. But even the lesson I'm giving you, if you are going to hold it well, it will help you. The next point about horns. The next point about horns. Horns, they are a place of evidence. Okay? Horns. The next thing you need to know that it is a place of evidence. Okay? And evidences, as we know, it can be used for you or it can be used against you. Okay? But this evidence, depending on the nature of the altar, the evidence can either be used against you or it can be used for you. Especially if the person who attends to the altar of your family is, is your enemy. Then I'm telling you, every evidence that will be gathered will be used against you. The horns of the family. The horns of the family. Please don't joke with horns. Do not joke with horns. It is a very sensitive, serious thing that you do not have to joke with. It is a place of safety. It is a place of mercy. It is a place where things are scattered. It is the heartbeat of the altar. Now, it is a place where there are evidences, a place of evidence. Come with me into the book of Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 1. Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 1. Let us look at something there. Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 1. Oh, wow. My sister Martha, longest time, longest time. Martha in Prague. My sister Martha in Prague, longest time. Thank you for passing through. God bless you, sister Martha. God bless you. Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 1. I'm reading Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 1. We are learning about the, the horns of the altar. Take it serious. This is for your liberty. You see, things that have scattered, things that are not going well, the source of all of these things is the all, is the horn of the altar. Is the horn of the altar. Thank you, Sister Martha. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It is the horn of the altar. Now, we have seen that altars are a place of what? Evidence. So, let us read Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 1. The sin, listen, the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with a point of diamond. It is engraving upon the table of their hearts and upon the horns of your altar. Wow. The sin... Okay, the sin of Judah has been written on the horns of the altar. I'm telling you, it is boldly written there. The weaknesses of Judah, the evidences against Judah, according to Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 1, it is written with a pen. It is written with an iron pen. It is written boldly on the horns of the altar. <laughs> Don't joke with horns. He said that it is grieving upon the table of their heart. Remember, the heart of the altar is the horn. Okay? And upon the horns of your altars. So your sin, the evidences that can be used against you is written on the altar. Don't joke. The evidences. The sin of Judah is plainly written on the altar of his own, on the horn of his own altar. Okay? So, this brings us into the issues of spiritual court stuff. Okay? They deal with evidences. So, the evidence against Judah is written on the horn of his own altar. Listen, the reason why some of you cannot progress, the reason is this, that... The evidences against your own progress, it is written on the horns of your own family altar. So the spirit that comes down, anytime they come down, they see it visibly written that, oh, sister A, sister B, sister C has done that, has done this, has done this, brother C did this, brother C did that. Oh, she is even having an, an issue with the man. She is not at peace with the dad. This, that, that. It is written boldly. On the horns of the altar. 
that is being used as an evidence against you. It can be used as an evidence for you. Don't joke with horns. That is where it is written. Amen. Amen. Great teachings, prophet. We thank God. We thank God. So if you want to know where the evidence is against your own life is written and why certain things are not going, the key is the horn of the altar. Don't go far. It is the horn. Because it is on the horn that it is everything against you is written there. Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9. They did it to Judah. The sins of Judah. They were using it to deny Judah. Sin as an evidence. We have learned it on this platform. So, and we, we even said that that is why it is a necessity to always ask for forgiveness of sin. And our administrator, Prince Chapman, said that the act of asking for forgiveness of sin should become a daily ritual. Because all those evidences against you will be dropped. The, the moment you ask Jesus to forgive you every day, whether you have sinned or not, whether you are conscious of it or not, let it be a daily ritual. Let it be a prayer. Why? Because it is an evidence that can be used against you. And it is written on the horn of your own family. That is why a person's family can say that we will not allow you to get married. Why? They have evidences tonight. If you want to deal with certain things in the home, it is the horn. Because it is that which scatters. It is the heartbeat of the altar. It is that which contains the evidences that is being used against you to delay your life. It is coming from there. To slow you down, it is coming from there. The evidences are written on the, on the horn. Boldly written there. My brother, my sister, that is the source. That is the source of your delay. The horn in your father's house. The horn in your mother's house, they have boldly written it. They are dealing with you. They are delaying you. That is where the problem is. That is the source. That is the source. Tonight, I said, I've given you the key as a prophet. I said, go on your knees and touch the horns that is in heaven. There is an altar before our father. Revelation chapter 9, verse 13. It has four horns. Please, you see, four golden horns. Touch one by faith. You don't even have to see it. Blessed is he who has not seen but yet believes. Okay, Matthew 5. Blessed is he who has not seen but yet believes. My brother, what is faith? Faith are the things you have not seen with your, with your physical eye, but you have the evidence. What is your evidence? The word of God. The word of God. Use the word of God. Revelation chapter 9, verses 13. Tonight, go on your knees and pray that, Father, I am laying my hands on the altar that is in your presence, the golden altar. The golden altar has a golden horn. Everything about the altar is golden. Lay your hands on one of the golden horns. Lay your hands on two of the golden horns and pray for mercy and pray for safety. Oh God, pray for safety, pray for safety, pray for mercy. Pray for the other day in the book of Genesis chapter 15, God comes and spoke to Abraham and he said to Abraham, he said, I will be your shield, my God. Do you know what a shield means? It means I'll be your safety. I'll be your protection. Tonight, if you can go on your knees and lay hands on the horns that are before our father's altar and say, my father, for one of your name is that you are the shield. Be my shield. Protect me from curses of my family. Protect me from my past mistakes for my past mistakes are coming after me my past failures are coming after me a certain spirit is using my mistakes in the past as an evidence against me it is written on the horns of my family it is written on the horns of my own life it is being used to pursue me it is being used to pull me down jesus exempt me by showing me mercy jesus exempt me by being my shield and he would do it the reason why you are not seeing some of these changes is because you do not know what I'm telling you now. But from tonight, as I am sharing with you in the name of Jesus, I do expect that you will learn and begin to affect and effect changes. Yes. Jesus is the horn of your refuge. Jesus is the horn of your refuge and he is your buckler. It is, if you go to the book of Psalms, you will see some of these phrases a lot. 
that Jesus is our home of refuge. Listen, you run, you run to that place and lay your hands on there. You will be given a refuge. You will be given a place of stay. You will be exempted. It is a place of safety. It is a place of safety, my brother, my sister. Please, 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 horns, horns, don't downplay horns. They can scatter your life. They can push you back. They can do a lot of evil to you, especially if the altar is an evil altar. Then you are, you are dead. Listen, they say that you see to push Syrians, push them until they are consumed. Listen, they can use a certain horn in your own family. They can use it to push you back till you are consumed, till you are done, till nothing good comes out of you, till it is a goodbye for you. They can use it to push you back, 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 back until you are consumed. Don't sit down and wait for it to happen. Matthew chapter 12, verse 29, Jesus' principle, bind the strong man, bind the horns of the altar, bind it. The next thing I want you to know about horns, the next thing you should know about horns is that they are the eyes of the altar. Horns, they are the eyes of the altar. Another thing you should know about horns is that they are the eyes of the altar. What do you use your eyes for? Tell me, what do you use your eyes for? One of the basic things everyone uses his or her eye for is to see, okay? Because the altar is a living thing, it must be able to see. So the altar sees stuff through the horns, okay? The altars see stuff. So if the altar is an evil altar, and if the altar is an evil altar, and the altar sees that something good is coming the way of someone in the family. Immediately, they must project their horns to scatter it. To scatter it. Yes, horns are the eyes of the altar. Please come with me. Come with me to the book of Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. We are learning. We are learning about horns. We are still on the series of the altar. We are still on the series of the altar. Today we are talking about the homes. God willing, on Wednesday, I'm going to talk about the priest or the people who attend to the altar. How to deal with them. Their, their duties, what they do and how to deal with them. Okay, When you learn all these things and you practice them, you are going to see a change in your life. It will affect spiritual things and it will manifest in the natural. The key point of everything that is affecting you from, from the altar of your family is the horn. The horn is the source of all of these things, okay? It's the source of all of these things. Those who didn't join us to hear some of the things we said from the beginning, please, after this, you can pause it and go and listen to some of these things. Pay the price, buy data and listen to it. It will help you. It will really help you. So, Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. I'm reading from the verses. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it has been slain, having seven horns. This time, the, the, the horns here are what? Seven. Listen. And, and seven eyes. Seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirit of God, sent forth into all the earth. When we were treating the seven spirit of God, anybody who it was one of the interesting topics, okay. And we saw that the seven spirit of God, they are the eyes of God, and it is written here, Revelation chapter five, verse six. I am not the one who wrote it. I didn't go and read a certain book and I'm coming to tell you something from a book because people will be tagging you of teaching all kinds of stuff. But this is written here in your own Bible. Revelation chapter 5 verse 6. It said that these have what? Seven horns with seven eyes. And these are the seven spirit of God that had been sent forth into the earth. Listen, this seven spirit of God, according to Isaiah chapter 11 verses, uh, verses 2, the names of all of them are, these seven, they are also horns. 
they are horns now that you are understanding what horns are and what they do you can know what they are functioning as when they are functioning as horns what they do okay and they are the seven eyes it is here seven horns and seven eyes so horns are the eyes of the altar Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10 Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10 also confirms it that these are the eyes of the Lord on earth. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10. So it is confirming that the horns are the eyes of the altar. Okay, so combine Revelation chapter 5 verses 6 and Isaiah 11 verses 2. It is confirming the same thing. That, this, that these horns, who are the seven spirit of God, they are the seven eyes of God. So please... Horns, one of the things you should know about them is that horns, they are the eyes of the altar. It is in your Bible. They are the seven horns, the seven eyes. Revelation chapter 5 verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10. They are the eyes. So the horns are the eyes. Okay? So the horns of your family altar, they are the eyes. And I ask that what does eyes do? The basic thing we use our eyes for is to see. So listen, if the, the minister or the priest who attends to your family altar, they must be able to see your progress. Even if you have traveled overseas, they should be able to see your progress. They should be able to monitor you and see where you are going and how things are going for you. What enables them to see is the altar. What enables them to see is the altar, but which part of the altar enables them to see is the horn. I said, don't joke with the horn of altars. It is everything about the altar is the horn. When the minister approaches the horn and sees through the horn, they will be able to know how you are moving in life, the progress, etc. Suddenly, they will create a problem for you wherever you are because they have seen. They are able to see through the horn. That's why Jesus said, if you want to be free, if you want to lose your goose, if you, you want to have your destiny manifested in the right way, when you enter into your house, don't go and start looting and losing things. First of all, bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. And we have seen that the strong man of the altar the life sustainer of the altar, the place where the powerhouse of the altar is, the heartbeat of the altar is the horn. So Jesus said, when you are dealing with altars, bind the horns, deal with the horns, because they are the eyes. They are the eyes. They can be used to see. They can be used to monitor you. They can be used to see that, oh, you have met a brother, you have met a sister who will change your life. You must be able to scatter this relationship and they will scatter it oh now you are part of priestly time on facebook now you are learning the secret about some of these things we must find a way to get you out of listening to this we have seen it through the horns because the horns are still active so we have seen that you are connected to priestly time we are we have seen that now you are learning certain things you had no idea of now certain truths are being uncovered to you oh wow so now you know that the source of all of these things is the horn we are going to deal with you they have seen it but if you can go on your knees tonight and revelation chapter 9 verse 12 listen touch the altar that is in the presence of your father you will be exempted mercy will be shown you they cannot do you nothing they can do you nothing yes that is warfare they can do you absolutely nothing Another thing you should know about the home. Another thing you should know about the home. Another thing you should know about the home is that it is a place where the strength and the power of the altar is kept. Okay? One thing you should know again is that the home is the place where the strength, the strong man, the strength and the power the power to do evil and, and to do good is kept there. Okay? The, the horn is a place where the strength and the power of the altar is kept. So that's why Jesus said, 
you must go and deal with the strength and the power of that altar. Bind the horns. So, uh, the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4. Let us go to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4. It is a place where the strength and the power of the altar is kept. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4. Come with me to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4. And his brightness was as the light, was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hands, and there was the hiding of his power. You see, he had altars, he had horns, okay? And there, he said that, and his brightness, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4, and his brightness was, the, was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hands. Horns were coming from his hands. And there was the hiding of his power. Where? Inside the horns that was coming off his hands was where his power was hidden. Okay? Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4. So the power and the strength of the altar is hidden inside the horn. And this scripture makes it very clear. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4. He said that, And horns were coming out of his hands. And there, there, out of the horns that is coming out of his hands, in there is hidden the power. In there is hidden the power. So an altar and a horn is a place where the strength and the power of the altar is hidden or is kept. You can know the strength of your altar by the number of horns the altar has. Okay? By the number of horns the altar has. The altar of the earth has four horns, which correspond to the four corners of the earth, with each one assigned over a prince with each one assigned over a prince these are the controlling forces of the earth revelation 7 it is there revelation 7 if you go to the book of revelation 7 you will see it there revelation chapter 7 i'm reading from the verse 1 revelation chapter 7 to buttress what i'm saying Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four, four angels, okay, standing on the four corners of the earth. Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, okay, holding four wings of the earth. You are even end it here. So these are the four horns of the earth. These are the four horns. They are the people who control the activities of the earth. Listen, they were holding the wind. They are in control of activities of the earth. These angels are the angels from the light perspective of from the portion of our father. These ones come from heaven, the domain of our father. And these are the four princes who are in charge of this earth, this world. They are in the four corners. They are the four horns. Okay. And Satan also has four horns who are also in charge of this world, who must also make sure that evil and stuff also continues. They are there. They are, they are also four who are also in, in opposition. They are all the time trying to oppose what our father is doing. They are trying to do a copycat or a counterfeit of whatever our father is doing. So inside our father, the earth, the altar for the earth, that makes it possible for spirits to come to earth. It has four horns. And these four horns are four princes, not common angels, not basic angels. These are prince, chief prince, okay? Big bosses. 
they are in charge and they are standing at the four corners and they are in charge of the activities they can hold the wind from blowing on earth they can decide what happens and what doesn't take place here on earth they are in charge they are the four horns of the earth they are the four horns of the earth you see from here i can teach you something that will blow your mind i can teach you something from here that you will be very surprised do you know do you know that through this same verse here okay i'm teaching you one secret from here this same verse here you are able to have certain things that are not going right in your family or in your life corrected if you have angelic ministry you will understand this okay you will engage amen amen uh Shuris, the prayer i prayed for you jesus has already made a move okay yes when you laid your hand on your chest and i prayed for you what is on your heart jesus has already attended to it mark it there is coming a speedy recovery there is coming a speedy answer for you okay good okay so you can even engage this scripture and have the services of this four because every activity on earth they have direct access to it because our father has mandated them they have direct access to every activity here on earth so if something is not going right for you listen here he said that they have the power to bind the wind so if you are on earth here and a certain wind is going against you these four horns they have the power from our father to stop that wind from blowing you see there are a lot of secrets and a lot of mysteries a lot of things you can engage these four horns you can engage them that there is a certain evil wind blowing in my marriage blowing in my business something is not going right call them quote the scripture call them the four horns of the earth in the name of jesus they will come and they are going to bind that wind they will prevent the wind from blowing this is their job this is their assignment we are living in too much ignorance anyway let me leave this thing alone and come back to uh my homes over here the next thing is that the horn is the strength of the altar my time is almost up the horn is the strength of the altar if you go to the book of amos chapter 3 verse 14 you will know that the horn is the strength of the altar the strength of the altar the strength of the altar now the horn the horn also represents the ruling powers of the altar so if the horn of your family altar is two then it means that the ruling powers of the altar or the ruling powers of your home are two if they are four if they are six they are 14 etc then it tells you the number of ruling powers there are okay so the horn represents the ruling powers the number of powers who are in control of the altar is represented by the horn so if the horn is two then the ruling powers is two or the powers in control of the horn is two if it is four if it is six etc you see i'm giving you some of these guidelines so you should be able to go into prayer with it and let jesus show you the name of your family altar every altar has a name every altar and the name attracts a spirit so there is a spirit who is in charge of the altar get to know the name of your family altar get to know the spirit in charge get to know the horns of the altar i said every altar whether you know or not has a horn okay so get to know that how many horns are there in your family altars get to know them get to know the things written on the horns against you or for you get to know some of these things some of us we didn't know any of these things at all but thank the lord jesus christ that tonight some of these things has been unveiled to us we should pursue this knowledge go and develop it pray into it and i believe that god will show you in a dream god will unveil it to you with time you will get to know the number of horns in your family the number of horns 
that are in charge of etc. So the horns is also the ruling powers. The ruling powers. Uh, you can take Revelation um, chapter 17, verse 3 and verse 12. Sister Martha, yes. Uh, okay, I will talk to you behind closed doors. But one of the ways you can know it is asking in prayer. Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 7. It said that we should what? We should ask and we will be forgiven. Uh, we will be given. We should seek and we will find. We should knock and the door will be open. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. The Bible said that we should call unto him and he will show unto us great and mighty things. Things you have no idea, including this ones. The, the horns in your family, they have names. You don't know about them. But when you call on Jesus Christ on that particular area, according to that verse, God will show you things you don't know about. Things you have no idea. Okay? So, the specific is that when you are dealing with horns, the altar in your family, the first thing is the, the horns. Okay? Focus on the horns because the horns is the heartbeat of the altar. And I gave an example that what keeps a human being alive biologically is the heart. So if your heart ceases, you will die. The, the heart of, the, of every altar is the home. So if you are to deal with the home, you have been able to deal with the heartbeat of the altar. Okay? So some of these scriptures, but one of the key is prayer. One of the key is prayer. And if you want a faster way to knowing it, I have to say this also, other people too can benefit. One of the fastest way to know, Jesus Christ said that these things doesn't go except with what? Prayer and fasting. So if you want to know the name of your family altar, the spirit in charge, and the horns, their number, if you want to know the number of horns in charge, okay, fasting and prayer, that is what Jesus told us. That such things doesn't come except with prayer and fasting. If you want to know the names, if you want an angel of God to take you around into your family spiritually and show you things you do not know, it is prayer and fasting. When we started this teaching on altars, I said that there are families in heaven, Ephesians chapter 3, 15, and there are families here on earth. These two families are named after Jesus the Christ, okay? So now, every family here on earth has an angel God has assigned over. Every family here on the tribe you are, you are from, the family you are from has an angel. And that angel is the one who is holding the key to your family. So that angel that our father has assigned over your family, eh? he knows the number of horns the family altar has. He knows the name of the altar. He knows who even built that altar. The sacrifices being done there. Uh, how things are scattered, etc. And that same angel can even tell you what to do to stop the activities of the altar. To stop the activities of the altar. Okay? That angel has all these keys. But will you be surprised that some of us, we have never spoken to the angel over our family ever before. We are not even aware that our family has an assigned angel. We are not even aware. We have never spoken to them before. Some have masculine appearances. Some have feminine appearances. We have never spoken to them before. And we are struggling. And the family authors are still dealing with us. Meanwhile, God has strategically named every family after his name and he has given angels assigned over these families okay so that you can be able to contact them so if tonight you can start praying these prayers and god will mandate the angel of your family to give you a tour of your family spiritually it can be in a dream you will meet someone in a dream who would who will now tell you stuff about your family that you never knew. God is now answering your prayers in that area. You can meet an angel who will tour you around your family, who will show you certain things about your family you have no idea of. This is how to go about it. Okay, this is how to deal with it. Huh. 
like and i remember on some few occasions i was praying with people and their head okay their head became how do i express it like uh our father used their head to help me know the number of horns that controls their altar because for instance sometimes i i can see uh that there is someone whose whose head has like four horns on it so i immediately know that okay the 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 altar of this uh sister home is having four horns so far i think i saw a lady's hair with six uh, different horn on it and i told her that there are six controlling forces of her altar six so she must get into prayer and in fasting and god through that is going to deal with those horns because until those horns are dealt with you will not see any change you will not get married so many things will not come and as i said those who didn't join us from the beginning about these horns okay you can revisit this video and listen to it and make note it will help you it will help you it will boost your prayer life it will open your eye and it will help you know what you must do let us consider the types of horns there are types of horns okay there are types of horns there the first horn you yourself you should know is what we call the personal horn okay um, i am uh, going to end very soon the personal horn we thank god steven we thank god you should first of all know that you have a personal horn okay a personal horn and this personal horn it can be defiled this personal horn of yours it can be defiled okay all right so you just let us consider some few scriptures on the personal horn and see something first samuel chapter 2 verse 1 first samuel chapter 2 verse 1 just come with me first samuel chapter 2 verse 1 we are teaching it's not preaching so i'm not going to be shouting here and there we are teaching let it get into you write it down go and practice it for your liberty okay first samuel chapter 2 verse 1 and hannah prayed and said my heart rejoices in the lord my horn okay my horn talking about a personal horn okay yes personal horns thank you debbie personal horns that is the first type of horn you have so anybody who is listening to me you have a personal horn if you are not aware tonight i'm telling you you have a personal horn so hannah discovered listen hannah was in trouble hannah has been troubled hannah was looking for a baby she didn't get the baby hannah was looking for marriage was looking for money was looking for a breakthrough etc maybe your situation may be like that of hannah maybe you are looking for a breakthrough you are looking for a certain amount of money you are looking for somebody to assist you you are looking forward for a personal destiny helper to come your way but the key is to uncover your personal horn so hannah said after after hannah uncovered her personal horn look at what uh, she said he said that my horn is exalted in the lord so until your personal horn is exalted you will never see progress the moment hannah's personal horn was exalted she had something and he said that my mouth is enlarged over my enemies because i rejoice in your salvation what affected this it was the personal horn of hannah a personal horn a personal horn okay if you go to the same first samuel chapter 2 verse 10 if you go to verse 10 you will see verse 10 to say that the adversaries the adversaries of the lord shall be broken to pieces out of heaven shall he tender upon them the lord shall judge the ends of the earth 
He shall give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. He's also talking about a personal horn, his anointed, talking about one particular person. So every anointed person also has a horn. This is dealing with the personal horn. A personal horn. Come with me. The book of Psalm 13. Psalm 132. Psalm 132. We are just talking about the personal horn here. Psalm 132. Psalm 132 verses 17. Psalm 132 verses 17. Psalm 132 verses 17. Psalm 132 verses 17. I'm reading. There will I make the horn of David to bad. I have ordained a lamp for my anointed, my goodness. Listen, your personal horn must what? Bad. Psalm 132 verses 17. Psalm 132 verses 17. The word of God is saying that God said he will cause the horn of David to bad. You see, it means that your horn must grow. Anything that cannot grow is dead. Okay, so it is telling you that the horn of David, a personal horn of David was alive, was carrying life. So God said, I'll cause it to bad. I'll cause it to be fruitful. One of the keys to, to seeing effect and fruitfulness in your life is dealing with your personal horn. Is dealing with your personal horn. It must be exalted. It must be lifted. It must be lifted. It must be exalted. It must be lifted. Your personal horn. Your personal horn. Your personal horn. Psalm 92 verse 10. Psalm 92 verse 10. Psalm 92 verse 10. Psalm 92 verse 10. I'm reading Psalm chapter 92 verse 10. But my horn, my horn, a personal horn, okay? Psalm 92 verse 10. My horn, me, my horn. It is a personal horn being spoken about here. But my horn shall thou exalt like that of a unicorn. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil until your horn is lifted, until your, your horn is exalted. You will not see promotion. You will not see certain things happening in your life. With this knowledge of what horns are and the functions of horns, you should know that when your horn is shut down, when your personal horn has been casted down, it means that the heartbeat of your life has been dealt with. When the strength of your life, which is your personal horn, when it has been cast down, it means that you will be cast down. But when it is exalted and when it is lifted, it is going to affect and you get promotions in your life. Listen, don't play with horns. Don't play with your personal horns. Tonight, I want to encourage you that maybe you, you are not even aware of your personal horn. Please, on your personal horn is written your name. Some of us, eh, our parents didn't name us the name heaven recognized us with. Maybe there are some people, the name God had for you is for you to be called maybe Sarah. And your mom or your dad said, oh, there is a certain woman who actually supported us when your mom was pregnant. <laughs> and this woman is called abena so if uh, you have been giving birth to and you are a lady i'm or a girl i'm naming you after that woman and automatically you have been named abena your destiny has been tempered with but if you are to be giving insight into your personal home you will see that on that horn is written your name jeremiah chapter 17 1 is a very good biblical basis for it you will see that the original name the heavens know you with is written on the horn. That is when you will know that if your name from the point of view of God is really Edwin or not. If your name is Prince or not. If your name is Sarah or not. 
if your name is Mary or not, because on your personal horn, the original name heaven knows you with is written on it, and you will know. And Jabez, his name was really troubling him until he prayed that Papa, that my personal horn doesn't contain the name Jabez. He said that my 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 personal horn it doesn't contain the name Jabez. I don't know why my mom named me Jabez because the mother was in pain when she was giving birth to the boy. So she used the circumstances and the event in naming the child. But when the child came to a level of maturity in Jesus Christ and he, he had encountered, you see, the name was troubling him. The name had limited him. And when he saw the secret of some of these things you and I we are learning tonight, he prayed and he cried unto God. If you go and read the book of Judges, you see, he cried unto God that, Papa, the issue is my personal horn doesn't have the name Jabez. Change my name. Change my destiny. I'm telling you, names are very powerful. That's why every altar has a name. Names are very powerful. Very powerful. Okay, so a personal horn is one. Then we, we have what we call the iron horn. The, the horn made out of iron. We have the horn made out of gold. Like the golden altar in heaven has a golden horn. Okay, so the, the uh, horn made of iron, you can see it in the book of First Kings chapter 22 verses 11. You will see, according to the book of 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 11, you will see the horn made out of iron. Uh, the golden iron, uh, the golden horn, you will see it from Revelation 9, 13. And as I said, the personal horn, your personal horn can be defiled. Okay, you can defile your personal horn. By practicing certain things that brings defilement to you it affects your personal home it can be defiled we also have wicked homes psalm 75 verse 4 psalm 75 verse 4 we have wicked homes as i said if the altar is a wicked altar definitely the controlling force the heart the etc which is the horn is wicked that one will scatter, will push away, will destroy, disperse, destroy stuff in your life. Okay? So there are wicked homes. Psalm 75 verse 4. Wicked homes. And there are horns of righteousness. There are horns of righteousness. Horns of righteousness. The horns of righteousness you can also get from Psalm 75 verse 10. Psalm 75, verse 10. Horns of righteousness. Horns of righteousness. Psalm 75, verse 10. We have horns made of ivory and ebony. Or as we say, ebony. So, we have horns made from ivory and ebony. Or ebony. As the whites, we say ebony. And then the Africans, we say ebony. So, we have a horn made from ivory and a horn made of ebony ezekiel chapter 27 verses 15 is talking about that type of horns that type of horns ezekiel chapter 27 verses 15 is talking about that type of horns so listen when you are building a personal altar which i am encouraging all of you please 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 have an altar. Noah had an altar. Jacob had an altar. Moses had an altar. Abraham had an altar. And these people who had altars, they were having connections with the supernatural. And these people are people of covenant and great destinies. Okay? Please have an altar. From the beginning, uh, last week, I told us that if you go to Chinese restaurants, you will see their altars there. They believe in altars. For you to do well, you need a supernatural hand. 
for the supernatural hand to be part of your physical activities, an altar is needed because the altar is the intercession, the middleman that brings the upper world and the lower worlds together so they can mingle and treat together. It is the altar that does that way. If you go to Chinese restaurant, especially in Europe, you will see they have their altar, so it is there. You see some statue of Buddha, Shiva, it is their altars. You see some uh, candles, it is their altars. And no Chinese business collapse because they believe in the power of altars. Are you a child of God? Are you a pursuer of God? Are you a God chaser? Then please, please and please, I'm begging you, have altars. Live the life of altars. Altars are gateways. Listen. Authors are, I am ending with this. Authors serve as a gateway to us here on earth, okay? Here on earth, for you to assess the supernatural, you need an altar. So the, the moment you approach the altar, the altar serves to you here on earth as the gateway to the spirits. Okay? So I have, I told us that I am building two altars in my room which I have built to a certain point. I have built the two already. I'm adding some stuff, okay? And I'm going to do the horns. I'm going according to the principle of altars. I'm doing the same here, okay? Remember, the horns are the ruling powers. We have seen in Revelation 7 that these horns are angels, okay? They are angels. So the horns of your family, they are not just horns. They are living living spirits they are able to scatter they are able to destroy they are able to gather they are able to do a lot of things okay so you need to also be conscious build an altar build it we said that one of the first things about altars last week is that they attract a tent and i explained that a tent is where your material blessings are kept Altars are built towards God. So for you to be blessed materially here on earth, you need to have an altar because your altar will affect your tent. And that is the life of our father Abraham. He lived in tent and was building altars. All the men of old were men of covenant and what? Tent. Because an altar demands a tent and a tent demands an altar. The more God is blessing you materially, the wider and bigger your tent become the more you need to attend to your altar. Please, you want to be blessed materially. You want to affect and make a generational impact. The key is altar. When you come to the altar, the heartbeat of the altar we have learned today is the horn. The horn is everything there is about the altar. The horns are not just horns. They are living beings, okay? They can be demonic angels. They can be good ones, depending on who built it, and what the name of the altar is. So those who, who didn't join us from the very beginning, we broke down altars and shared a lot of things on altars. What you need to see about altars when you are building characters you need to look out for. Okay, now, let me tell you, these two altars I have personally built that I'm still building. The one to my right, okay, the one to my right is called Jehovah Nissi. Okay, the name that is placed on the right altar is called Jehovah Nissi, which simply means that God, he has seen and he will make a provision. So whenever I approach that altar in prayer, God will come down and make a provision. I'm going to go him before him with a particular need in the area of provisions. Okay. In the area of provisions and then the other one to my right is a name called El Elohi El Elohi the God the mighty one okay God the mighty one that is the altar of warfare it is the altar of battles so if I approach it I'm going to deal with family issues altar must must deal with altars okay altar fight altars altar must fight altars and this is how to do it okay so when i'm dealing with family tough issues spiritually court court issues of the family i approach the altar called el elohi el elohi god the mighty one 
I approach it in prayer. If I'm dealing with provisional staff, Father, I need this, I need this, I need that, this, 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 this. it is a need. I go before that altar and I commune with God. The altar is serving as a gateway to give me a human being access into the upper world. Okay, and it will open the door for the for those in the upper world to also intervene in my life here on earth so that a certain favor can hit me. What they will do for that thing to come, me, I don't know. But the altar is going to open the door for them to step in. Okay, so they will step in on my behalf. And then they being higher beings, they having power, they know what they will do to turn situations around for me. Please, I'm begging you, don't downplay altars. Don't downplay altars. Altars are very necessary and they are very powerful. I want to encourage you to build altars for your marriage, build altars for your finances, build altars for your job, okay? Approach God. Give it a good name. Give it a good name. Get horns. Me, I've not done the horns yet. The next thing I'm doing is the horns. Okay, I need to assign some horns, stronger, stronger horns around each of these altars. I need horns. I need horns, stronger ones around it. And it will amaze you that I'm not even done building, you know, but somebody visited me. The person came out from a far place, took a Uber or taxi, got in here to visit me i don't know the agenda of the person anyway the person comes into my room living room sees this altars the person didn't even spend two minutes he said i am going until so today what the person saw i don't know what she saw he said i am going this person who has been on me i want to see where you are staying i want to visit you finally i agreed okay you can come around because this day i'm home the person comes all the way. This person sees this altar. Less than two minutes, she's going back and she left. And until today, she hasn't even called to say, hey, I've reached home or what. I don't know what she saw. But she ran away like that. She left. She didn't spend even two minutes. It's, it's too long. She left. She left. Please, I want to encourage you. Altars are something sensitive something wonderful something very powerful it is a living thing the heartbeat of every altar we have learned is the horn the controlling force the strength the life the container everything is the horn jesus's principle i have said it i'm not going to repeat it again take your time and watch this video again and make notes make note make note and practice the principle so how do you attack an altar i already said it, but i'm going to repeat it so that it will be for your benefit how do you attack an altar matthew chapter 12 verses 29 mark chapter 3 verses 27 jesus said bind the strong man first before you can untie your blessings out of your house deal with the strong man the strong man is the homes so in, in dealing with altars, please follow the principle of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 12, 29, Mark 3, 27. Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. Akosia Ejewa Ajeman. Wow. Thank you for joining us. God bless you, Sister Kos. God bless you. God bless you. You see, so God will learn on Wednesday. We are going, we are still uh, on the series of altar. I've taken my time to teach it. God willing, on Wednesday, 7.30, we are on. I'm going to the ministers, those who attend to the altar. Okay? Those who attend to the altar. The last time I said that, woe is you. If the person who attends to, your, to the family altar is your enemy, nothing good will come your way. If the person who attends to the family altar is an enemy, nothing good will come your way. And today we learn that the blood has a voice. God bless you to Sister Coase. God bless you too. Genesis chapter 4 verse 10.
the blood has a voice so ask yourself the blood that is empowering the horn of your altar what voice does the blood have is the blood speaking against your destiny or is the blood speaking for you but one thing i can assure you is that the blood of jesus is a speaking blood and this blood is not speaking against you but this blood is speaking for you the blood is speaking against those who are against you genesis chapter 12 verses 2 genesis chapter 12 verses 2 our father said to our father in faith abraham he said anybody who blesses you i will bless anybody who curses you i will curse the blood of jesus the speaking blood of jesus is blessing anyone who blesses you the voice in the blood is not against you in this dispensation the blood and the voice thereof is not against you i came to encourage and to and to strengthen someone that the, the speaking blood the voice of the blood the voice of Jesus' blood is not against you. The voice of Jesus' blood is for you, is speaking for you, is atoning for you. Please make good use of the blood. Make good use of the voice. That is why today you must go on your knees and lay hands on the horns. That is before our Father. There is an altar, a golden altar before our dad. Go before him and lay your hands on those horns, and your life will never be the same. You are praying one prayer, and then we are going. Oh, our time is up already. You are praying one prayer. Listen, don't go and attack any horn. Please, I'm begging you. Don't go and attack any altar. Let us finish the series on altars okay let us finish the whole series on altars and get well informed then you can go and begin to attack and you must attack from the horns okay before the series will end i will teach us how to know the names of the horns and etc angelic assistance uh, 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 like angelic assistance etc how to engage them how to help you in your dreams etc and I, I will even chip in a little bit of dream dreams how dreams can be engaged in to see these angels all of them are in your bible though. they are in your bible just that you need the spirit of god to open your eye to see them okay uh jacob he didn't receive a vision when he got to the place called Luz, that he called Bethel. Bible said that he slept, and when he slept, he saw a dream, and in that dream he saw a ladder that is connecting the heavens and the earth. And in that dream, God showed him stuff. He saw a deep thing. Your dream is very important. God will unveil and teach you a lot of things in your dream. Listen to me. Before we are done with the series on altars. I believe so much that our Father in heaven is going to visit you in a dream. The angel of your family will give you a tour of your family in a dream. Certain things will be unveiled to you concerning your family in a dream. You will understand so many things concerning the family altars in a dream. So that when you are ready to fire up in prayer, you will not just go and attack any altar just like that. Many of us, we are wounded at the gates. We are wounded. We have been overthrown things have gone bad for us because we attacked but we we attacked from the wrong angle you must attack the horns first you must attack the horns first that is the strategic move that is the strategic move you are praying this prayer that my father cover me tonight protect me tonight because some of these messages that you are hearing they are very dangerous and you may get some attract, uh, you may attract some attacks on yourself, etc. But don't be afraid, okay? Because the realm of demons is governed by two things: hatred and fear. Hatred and fear. There is no love in their realm. The realm of demons, there is nothing like love. What is there is fear and hatred. So the moment fear enters into you. It means that a frequency from the realm of demons is entering into you. And the book of Revelation says that anyone with fear cannot make it to heaven. So please don't let the demon fear enter into you. Don't be afraid. 
where there is love, fear is overcome. Okay, so have love, be full of hope in Jesus, be full of love in Jesus. Don't be afraid. That's why I'm saying that don't go and attack any altar. Let us finish this whole series this week, Friday. Wednesday, I will come away again by the grace of God. Friday, we are finalizing. Friday, I'm going to touch on everything we have ever said on altars. So in case you ever missed something on Friday, we will be touching on almost all of them as a summary so that you can get a full note. Then you can release your asanas in prayer. And you can know where to target, where to go first, where to bind, where to break, where to lose, etc., etc. And by then, your angel will also visit you by the permission of our Father in Jesus' name to give you a tour of your family, to give you so many things. Finally, 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 Mark chapter 11, verse 4, our favorite scripture, priestly time, where the, the court was tied was where the altar was. And Jesus said, go and lose. Before this teaching will come to a close, I promise someone, just as Jesus released forth his disciples to go and lose that cult, before we are done, the altar that has tied you down at the gate of your family spiritually, Jesus' word, Jesus' fire, two angels will be released. They will lose your marriage they will lose your finances, they will lose your home, they will lose your job, they will lose your mind, they will lose you, you will be free, you will come clean, you will be healthy, you will be well, that sickness will fall off, they will untie you, and then when they ask you that, why are you doing this, why are you freeing this sister, why are you freeing this brother, why are you losing this person, we have tied him here for years. We, we don't want to see progress. We don't want to see her get married. We don't want to see anything. But why are you now losing this person? Mark chapter 11 verse 6. The answer says that the Lord, he is in need of him. And I said the other day that the, the, the term the Lord is used in the courtroom. So the moment you say that the Lord is in need of him, the enemy understands that the issue has been settled in the court of heaven and jesus christ has already won that is why he said tell them that the lord before this series will come to an end a certain blessing of yours that has been tied at your family gate spiritually will be loosed just as the the the, the court was tied was untied and loose yours will be loosed your goods will be loosed your, your money, your finances, your marriage, your education, etc. Every godly thing will be untied. It will be loose. Why? Because the Lord is in need of you. Jesus bless you. Jesus bless you and keep his face shining upon you. Lift up one prayer for protection. Say that, Daddy, in the name of Jesus, protect me. Lift up this prayer. Lift up this prayer. In the name of Jesus. Madala Bagadoshe. Zelelele Boshe. In the name of Jesus, Radada Brandolo Boshebren Kelebosh, Lelebe Sebren Bebe Galia Dosh, Beben de Gela Bahata, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for divine protection. Protect us, seal us, protect us, seal us, protect us, seal us. Protect us in the name of Jesus. Let the precious blood speak for us in the glorious name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy One of Israel. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Kalabalabosh, Brekantalia Magadosh, Zianta Magadis, Bren Telelebosa, Bren Tekana Makali Adosh. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus, the Christ of the living God. We thank you that we are sealed. We are sealed. We are sealed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody, listen to me tonight. Listen to me. I want you to go on your knees right now, wherever you are. Go on your knees right now. Go on your knees right now. We are all going to do this together. Priestly time is a time of demonstration. Please. If you